Karen neighbor murdered my cat and kittens. Let's burn her house down and get her in a 10-year prison sentence. Plus some more brutal karma. In this episode, you'll be intrigued by a husband destroying his wife through a sex tape he made of her and her lover. A cruel, all-out nuclear act, that puts a narcissist abuser away, for 25 years, while losing her baby. A Karen kills kittens, and gets put back in her place on multiple nuclear levels. And a mom, dismisses her motherly duties, by leaving her son to the wolves. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. So this little story begins with me and my wife happily married. We had two wonderful daughters, 13 and 10, and a pretty healthy relationship. Or so I thought. Anyways, at some point things started to appear off. She got very clingy to her phone all of a sudden, made sure to delete the saved password feature on our common PC, started having phone calls that suddenly ended when I came into the house slash room. You can probably guess what it was. Now having 15 years of marriage behind us, I was hoping it wasn't what it obviously seemed to be. So one day when she told me she was going to spend some time with the girls I decided to follow her. Sure enough, I find her driving to a hotel to meet with. Let's just call him Dickie. To say it was a gut punch was an understatement. I literally cried for an hour straight. After I was done with my self-wallowing phase, I decided the best course was getting even. I thought of several scenarios that may or may not have involved me beating Dickie into a bloody pulp. Eventually I decided to do things more civilly and more importantly legally, but only just. So the first part of the plan was gathering evidence. I could have just gotten a personal investigator, but I had something better in mind. So one day when my wife was at her job, and the kids at school, I installed some small secret cameras and microphones I had bought. Due to the setup of our bedroom, I even managed to get one perfectly overlooking the bed. I didn't however use them while I was at home. So a couple of days pass, when I propose to my wife, that I should take the girls on a trip somewhere, and stay a night too. At this point, I should also mention, that due to her job being pretty demanding and frequently exhausting her, and just due to our various passions and talents, I was always the main caregiver. I cooked most of the times, I took a far more active role in raising the girls, and showed them a lot more patience and attention. So me going alone with the girls on a trip, wasn't that weird. This part will also be very important later. So two weeks pass, in which time I get my affairs in order, and contact a lawyer to write up a separation agreement, that would involve me keeping residence and custody. I go on the trip, try to not give anything away to the girls, and wait and see if Dickie and my wife fall into the trap. When I returned, I check the recordings of the weekend, and sure enough it's a 36 hours bang fest. When they weren't banging, the dialogue was something even better. I found out that Dickie had a wife. But even worse, they also talked about me. And besides the obvious sexual character assassination that I expected, about how small my dick was, how I didn't satisfy her, etc., etc. There was some really hurtful stuff, like her telling Dickie some of my deepest secrets and shameful stories, that I had only told her about, just so they could have a laugh. So at this point I didn't have any doubts on what to do. The next day when the kids left, but before my wife left, I confronted her with the video and told her that either she signs the separation agreement and leaves the house, or the girls are going to receive an in-depth explanation of all the holes mommy got banged in. I wasn't gonna do that, just to be clear, I love my daughters too much, but I put the threat there and she was too emotional to realize my bluff. She went through all the stages, denying everything, trying to bargain, threatening me, and getting angry. I let it go through all that stuff. Eventually she signed the paper and she departed that very evening, after she told her goodbyes to the girls. I didn't show or tell the girls anything graphic. I was always very honest with them, which is another reason why I was always the favorite parent, so I just said that mommy had been unfaithful. The younger took some time figuring it out, but that was made up by my older getting mightily upset. She had just gotten her first boyfriend as I'm not sure the term really applies at that age, but she knew enough of the world to get pissed off big time. This would be important that it would be custody battle, as though she did for the moment agree to give over custody I feared, and I was right to fear, that she would try and fight me for the kids. What I didn't expect was, for her to use her visitation rights, to talk poo-poo about me. Basically, she started telling my younger one, 
about how it was all my fault for not forgiving her. Her lawyer even started demanding she receive custody, there was no way for her to receive money or the house as she was caught cheating and in my state, that means quite a lot in divorce proceedings. So I finally activated my nuclear revenge plan. Enter trip to South Carolina. Why South Carolina? Simple. Fort Sumter. I really wanted my daughters to see it. I definitely did not go there, because it is one of the last places, where revenge porn isn't illegal, and where I could upload my wife and Dickie's escapades, with no worries on Pornhub and other such porn sites, as you cannot be prosecuted for crimes, that weren't illegal when and where they were committed. I sent the links to my wife's employer, her clients, and everybody in her line of work. Just to be sure, to Dickie's wife and to his firm. Dickie soon got a divorce. I feel sorry for his wife, as she was an innocent victim in all of this, but I think it's better that she found out. As for my wife, this was the end of any chance to get custody. She soon got fired from her job of 8 years. And while the revenge porn part was a real dick move that did count in court, it being done in South Carolina, it wasn't illegal or prosecutable. So it could only be used as a minus about my personality, but with my wife unemployed and practically being blacklisted in her profession, due to being on porn sites, as well as the girls stating they wanted to stay with me, there was no question on who would get the custody. Yes, due to her being unemployed, I got no alimony. But honestly, I make enough money to sustain both me and the girl so I don't care, and I'm good enough at caring for them and then they are old enough to allow me to have a full-time job. Several months later, my wife is still unemployed, though I do not know if it's from the porn or from the virus. The girls are growing up just fine, and don't seem to mind, not seeing their cheating mother. The last time I communicated with my ex-wife was on Facebook, where she told me how I ruined her life and her relation to her daughters, but honestly, I think she deserves it. This is definitely going to be one of the cruelest things, you have ever heard of, but understand, even though I don't feel comfortable sharing my abuse. I can honestly say, that being raped wasn't the worst she did to me. There were other much more horrible physical sorts of abuse, some of which I can't talk about till this day. This happened around 40 years ago. I used to live in a conservative country. Where? Women don't work and men can't be abused. Abortion was also a punishable crime. I was dating a girl at that time. She was a typical narcissist. One year into the relationship, and she was abusing me in every way, verbal, physical, sexual. At that time, I didn't even realize what I was going through, was abuse. She forced me to sleep with her and forcibly got herself pregnant, when I told her I wanted space. She told me how I must always be with her, or the child will pay the price. She used to threaten me saying that the child will die if I leave her. A few weeks into the pregnancy and I wanted out. I was very confused at that time. I felt angry, frustrated, disgusted with myself but I didn't know why. I knew what was happening was wrong, but I couldn't articulate my feelings to others. All I knew was that I need to get out or I wasn't going to survive. So, I got a transfer to another city secretly. I was planning to leave and never look back. But the thought of an innocent child under her mercy was unbearable. Then, I put another plan into motion. I got abortion pills from a dealer with cash. I had to travel to another city for a week for work. I grounded the pills and replaced the powder inside her medicine capsules with the abortion pills powder. She took these daily. I told her I was breaking up with her just before leaving. And I also told her I will leave the city by the end of the month. She called all our mutual acquaintances, and told them about how heartless I was being. The child got aborted while I was away on business trip. She was detained by the time I came back, because the doctor suspected that it was an abortion and not a miscarriage. When the police questioned me, I told them that I told her I was breaking up with her, and that I was all set to move to another city by the end of the month. This was confirmed by others. The police thought she performed an illegal abortion to avoid being a single mother, she didn't have a job and generally it was frowned upon having kids out of wedlock. She got sentenced to 25 years in prison for homicide. She died in prison after serving 23 years. She was a horrible person to me. But there is no sure way, of me justifying my actions, by saying she would have been horrible to the child too. Maybe she would have changed. Maybe she would have come to her senses once I left. Maybe her mother instincts would have kicked in, and she would have been an amazing mother. 
It just wasn't a chance that I was willing to take. I made a choice into getting into a relationship with her. I just couldn't even entertain the thought of leaving an innocent baby with a person like her. I'm a poop hole, a murderer and a fraud. But I don't regret what I was forced to do. Throw away for obvious reasons. So first a bit of backstory. My wife and I live in a small town near the outskirts. It's all houses and no flats there. This will be very important later on. We also had a retired neighbor. We'll just call her Karen. Now, we found out that Karen had a bit of a history. Her husband beat a worker to death when he caught him stealing and then covered it up by hanging him in the forest. He managed to get away with it due to some political and police connections. The husband had died in the meantime, but everybody still remembered it due to the small town mentality. Therefore, she was an absolute outcast. That was probably exacerbated by her being an absolute Karen. Now let's get into the meat of it. So, over a year ago, we adopted a cat to go alongside our tomcat. Surprisingly for us, they had kittens quite quickly, three of them. Some two months after we adopted her. So we were raising them up, thinking about who should we give them to, when suddenly both she and the kittens disappeared. We found just one of the kittens in terrible agony that night, her screams woke us up. She died before we got to the vet. We already had our suspicions, which were confirmed by the vet. Broken glass. Given that the kittens always follow their mother, what we suspected happened, was that Karen put a bowl of meat in glass, and the cat found it, and shared it with the kittens. My wife wanted to go to the police. I had better ideas in mind. I should mention that the fence between us, is an old one made of chicken wire with a lot of holes. Very easy to cross. So, the next Sunday, when Karen went to church, as the religious person she is, I went to check through her house. Guess what I found in the trash? The two other kittens and the cat. And so I set my plan into motion. Next week, on Sunday, I went into her house again. This time I had come prepared. I had cleaned out everything flammable between our house and hers. Once inside her house I staged a little accident. She had a very flammable carpet. One well-placed turned candle and it started. So Karen comes home and sees that it's all burning. Most people would stop at that. We didn't. I was lucky my wife was fully on board. Seeing Karen there homeless, afraid and all around desperate. She knew she had nowhere to go, cause everybody would have told her to frick off. Good neighbors as we were, we offered her to stay at our place for a while, on the condition she tells us the truth about the cats. We promised we weren't interested in pressing charges, we just wanted closure. Obviously, I also had a hidden recorder on me. And when we let her inside, she tearfully confessed everything, saying how much she was sorry, how she wished she could make it right, yada yada. So now, I had a recording that was enough for quite a lot of criminal and civilian charges. Cruelty to animals, destruction of property, and emotional trauma. But I wanted to go for one more. The next week, after she brought all her stuff in, we served her an absolutely delicious lunch, duck with mushed potatoes. The only thing was, her portion had a crap ton of laxatives. So after she started shitting her guts out, we called for an ambulance, insisting she should go to the hospital. So Karen goes to the hospital, and finds out there was nothing wrong. Pretty pissed, she comes back to our home, to find all her stuff on the street and me and my wife on the fence, telling her to frick off. The main gate to our courtyard however, was left partially open on purpose. We also told her we would be pressing charges on the cats. Now entitled, angry and a scared Karen that she was, what do you think, did she take the bait? Of course she did, and she lounged right through the gate, to discover both me and my wife had two wooden sticks on us, that we promptly used to knock her teeth out. We then pressed charges on everything, damage to property, because the cat and kittens were technically our property, emotional trauma for killing the cats, and us finding the one that somehow survived for a few hours, breaking and entering an attempted assault. In the end she was sent to 10 years in prison and had to pay $10,000 in damages. Mainly for the attempted battery and psychological trauma. Really funny thing is, she kept all her money in the house that burned down with the house. So if she lives long enough to get out of prison, she will be dirt poor. This revenge was performed by my mom and her epic mind. It all started when I was born, life was happy, good and easy. My brother was a good and working person, college dropout, but always very smart, 
or that's what we thought. My brother went out every night with his friends, nothing alarming but very weird. Time passed and I turned 10 years old. At this point, my brother had a girlfriend, a son, and had already moved out. It was fun, until my brother moved back in with me and my parents. Dudu truly hit the fan there. The first day we noticed an instant change in both his personality and appearance. You see, he didn't move back in alone, he came with his son and girlfriend. We asked why he came back, and he simply said, they had a problem and this was temporary. For his girlfriend, Debbie, and his son this was true, but he stayed for the rest of this story in our house. When Debbie and her son left, she cut contacts with both our family and my brother, but occasionally asking for money. Don't tag her as bad right away, because she had a very good motive. After this, my brother became a good-for-nothing piece of doo-doo, with everybody in the house. Turns out his friends actually were his dealers, you know, for weed and stuff. Later we asked, why they truly left the other house and he just said, I had a fight with her brother and dad. It was vague but it was true. Sometime around 2018, when I turned 11, we occasionally went to visit Debbie and her son. One of those times my mom asked why she cut contact. The truth was, that my brother was emotionally, physically, verbally and sexually abusing her. She didn't press charges, and still refuses to do so because of fear. My mom became enraged at him, but didn't do anything just yet. Years passed, my brother stayed in our house, fights between my brother and everybody in the family became more and more common. My brother smoked pot 24-7 while there were two kids present in the house. I started showing signs of depression around that time. I was 11 years old, imagine how bad this was for me, to consider suicide at that age. More time passed, it's now 2020 and his first fight with my dad, his stepdad, just happened. My mom was leaving to go to Kulyakan. Right after the fight, my brother asked if he could go with her. Then my sister offered to buy him a plane ticket instead. This is where the revenge starts. You see, my sister bought a ticket to go, but not to come back. Mom was the one to come up with this plan, my brother didn't know this at the time. Kulyakan is a city known for being home to various drug cartels, it's pretty horrible, more so if you are like my brother. The day my mom returned, is when I was notified about all of this, I was expecting my mom to come back with my brother, but she came home alone. My brother was left alone in a hotel, with no money, no family, nothing. He tried calling us multiple times through public phones, but wasn't successful at all. Unless he gets a job in a house, he's either going to die of starvation, or is going to get killed by a drug cartel. It's the first time in years, I've truly felt happy. Thank you for watching Royal AI. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive future episodes. Share your experience in the comments, or tell us what you think of these stories.